tough patch of setting the place up. And we were starting to settle, and that's when we started teaching this, and then I wrote the book. Um, so you're asking whether at the beginning we knew it was going to be a success. Well, mm. we were very, I, was very then in, I was very into the idea of trusting, and I think if I'd a little, been a little bit more business-minded and rational uh, and analytical about it, um, I would have been very, very scared. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, we were we were very keen on just trusting that it was going to work, and uh, assuming that the people would come. That you know the kind of uh, if you build it, they will come, and it, it did work, and it, it worked very quickly as well. But it was very hard work at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, but it but a beautiful place to live, and it's a beautiful business to have, and we have beautiful people coming here every week now. Yeah, I mean, I, I looked at the website, I saw the video of the retreat, and it, abs- it looks absolutely beautiful, I must yeah. admit, it really does. And to be honest, the book as well, I mean, without the book, that, I mean, that's really the drive that's brought the people, isn't it, to kind of learn your philosophy. Yeah. Um, and the book is so successful as well. I mean, I, I was speaking to people today, that, and a lot of people I know, telling them that I'm going to be interviewing you, um, and there's this book called Fuck It. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I go, oh yeah, I've got that book. You know, so yeah, many people. It surprises me how many people have got it and read it. It has sold a lot. Yeah, it just. I think what's lovely about it, it spreads out very easily because it's a it's a message that refreshes people because um, we're talking about something that's very real, that's uh, very down to earth, and it allows us all to access spirituality or our spiritual side, or spiritual realm, very easily and very quickly. So um, and it's, lo- it's lovely to see it spreading out so quickly, and, it, and it's, it's now going all over the world. It's in 11 languages, so I'm get, I get calls from German magazines and Croatian centers wanting me to teach there, so it's really exciting, yeah. Crikey. <laughs> How does that translate into other languages? I mean, do they have these powerful profanities <clears throat> in that way? I'll tell you what they do. They put, they put fuck it in English on the cover and then right. have a form of translation, which is, uh, we're in Italy, that's what they're doing in Italy. Yeah. Uh, so they put uh, the Italian is Marquisa de Frega, which means who cares, basically. So yeah. it's not a profanity, but it's the essence of fuck it, which is it doesn't matter so much. <laughs> I guess what you've done there, though, you've kind of educated the masses on what the word fuck it means <laughs> in well, English that, as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, it, it's there. I mean, it's, a, it's like what I what I see it as is like this. Um, it's almost like a, a jewel. Uh, right in the middle of what we what we see as a kind of messy, um, immoral culture, uh, and, and the kind of high, the, 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 lo- the depth of that messiness is, is the way we swear so much, isn't it? The way mm. we all use the F word, every other word, it's just terrible. It's a real indication of how corrupt and bankrupt our culture and society is. And yet there, right in the heart of that, is an F, a phrase with the F word in it, that actually allows people to release and to relax and to find liberation in the end. And that's what it's about. It's about, it's about liberation. It's about yeah. real letting go and recognizing that things don't matter so much. Yeah. Mm. So where did the idea come from? Was it something that kind of built up over time? Was you just finding yourself saying it over and over again? Or was it kind of just a, an inspiration that comes to you? And being like a, a, an advertising creative, yeah. you could see the power of it. So I imagine you do, you know, you, you're talented in that way, aren't you, really? Um, well, where did it come from? It, we were kind of practicing various relaxation techniques and interesting in, in ideas about letting go and giving up on attachment for years. And we were actually teaching quite a lot in London. And then obviously teaching weeks when we got out here, we were teaching quite boringly named weeks, like holistic. Mm. We we were calling our weeks holistic weeks, I think. And we were starting to say to guests, um, well, that summer, it was pretty stressful summer for us. And yeah, we started to say to our, for ourselves, fuck it. And we realized that it was very powerful to say it. Not just that it was powerful, but it had a similar effect to a lot of the things that we've been doing as practices. It was allowing us to give up on attachments, which is essentially what you're doing. It's a very Buddhist idea. And so we then say to guests, um, you know, you're actually leading a pretty similar life to the lives that we've been leading, uh, stressed out, too busy, overworked, worrying about things too much. You're probably a control freak, etc., etc. Um 
oh, why don't you just go home and try to say fuck it? And um, that's our gift to you. I remember saying to a couple of guests, that's our gift to you. Um, you go home and just say fuck it to everything that's causing you stress. And we got um, lots of emails saying, we love the week, it was a really lovely holiday. just wanted to say that thing that you said to us about going away and saying fuck it has been so powerful. And so we sat there, and, and as you say, we, we have had experience in kind of presenting things to people in a way that appeals, and we could see that it's a very interesting idea to to match this idea of saying fuck it, this profanity, with the idea of being a, sp- a spiritual act or a spiritual philosophy. It's the, the juxtaposition of things sometimes makes them very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. It's indeed, it is indeed. Because when, when I spoke to you last time, you know, you couldn't come on because you was, um, you know, you, you had problems with the volcano like most people did. They couldn't get around, yeah. and obviously yeah. that caused a lot of problems for you as well. And obviously the world's going through quite a lot of changes at the yeah. moment. Um, I mean, I ask this question quite often with with various guests, you know, mm. just to get your insight and other people's insight. I mean, what? Do you, where do you feel the world's going? Do you feel that, you know, like humanity, the world, it's all going through a big change for the better? Um. Well, I'd, I'd like I'd like to get involved in the drama that says the, the, that we're all going down the tube and it's getting worse. But I suspect the answer is that it's always been like this, <laughs> and always will be like this. But there's always going to be drama in the in the in the dualistic world that we apparently live in, um, and that's that's part of the game, I think. So um, you know, there's always been something when 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 I was growing up, there was a huge fear around the the world ending through nuclear war um and uh there's always always been terrorist attacks and and uh disasters and and bad weather conditions there's there's always stuff uh and of course it's tempting to think but i was actually thinking as the volcano was picking off a few weeks ago and was uh potentially preventing our guests coming to see the barefoot doctor which was the first week we had and for potentially preventing barefoot himself coming out I was thinking, if this was happening in 2012, if it was now 2012 and this volcano was grounding all the flights in Europe and North America, we would certainly be believing that this was the the kind of beginning of the end of the world. So maybe the volcano has gone off two years early. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, and those, those, yeah. disasters, those disasters and kind of natural occurrences have got to wait a little bit so we can all kind of go... In 2012, oh my God, it is happening! We got <laughs> our knees very quickly. But I'm, I'm, um, I think it's all, it's, it's part of the drama to think that things are changing, and I'm afraid I, I do, uh, I do take take all that with a pinch of salt. The idea that either we're um, rapidly descending into chaos and uh, whatever whatever we believe might be happening, or that we're ascending. That there's many ideas around about a form. Of, kind of spiritual ascension or evolution. Hmm. Um, I, I think we're just kind of, we're just here. That this is what's going on. This is it. And there's not a lot other else than that. Yeah. The idea, the, those ideas are just ideas and concepts. And um, for me, they distract me from the beauty of just being here now. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> indeed. But I think, um, well, you know, like obviously the duality thing, a lot of people yeah. are getting into the spiritual way of life, aren't they? But at the same time, yeah. there's a lot of information overload. So yeah. people are kind of being bombarded with more and more things. Yeah. Um, so having to deal with so much more, so people are feeling more anxious. Um, but they've got a spirituality side as well. So it's kind of, it's great because you've got, obviously things are happening more and more, more technology to give us more yeah. information. But we've yeah. got the tools to allow us to get through it at the same time. And this is what, you know, the work you're doing is allowing yeah. people to um, balance themselves in a very high-powered environment. Do you, think the, the, do you think the spiritual tools that we can access are increasing at a, a, a proportional rate to the increase in information coming at us? <laughs> maybe, that's, maybe there's a formula for this. <laughs> I think be. it's true. I mean, what's, yeah. what's true is that I mean, it's almost like a spiritual supermarket now, isn't it? Mm. Where um, I, I, what I don't like, it, what I don't like about this the, the approach to it is that I, it's assumed to be that if you're into, let's say, angels, that you're also into about 15 other things. That you're into reflexology and uh, astrology and uh, and having your house cleansed by a shaman. So even though it's a supermarket and there's a huge amount of things to choose from in this in this varied um, modern supermarket. 
um, I think a lot of us are kind of bunged into the same bag. Uh, 